Welcome to the Minecraft Bedrock Edition version 1.20.40. This update is rolling out right now for Minecraft on iOS, Android, Windows, Xbox, Switch, and PlayStation. And before you guys ask, no, there is no shaders in this update. Guys, I ask you very kindly to leave a like on today's video. It's taken me quite some time to set up everything that you need to know. Don't worry about that guy. But yeah, if you could leave a like, I really appreciate it. Getting into the vanilla Java parity changes, focusing on gameplay. They changed the default value of the respawn radius in the advanced settings to 10. So if I was to do forward slash set world spawn as right here, what this means is when I die, I'm going to spawn within 10 blocks of this location. Now you can alter this inside of your settings. If you just scroll down, you will see it says respawn radius is 10. That means if I go all the way up here and I change my game mode to survival, we are going to spawn within 10 blocks of this block right here, which as you guys can see, we very clearly did. A really good change. Falling from a great height while in a boat no longer deals fall damage. This is a really good change for Minecraft Bedrock Edition players. If we go all the way up here, we grab ourselves a boat. We get inside of this in survival. Just go here. We just go off the edge. I'm not going to take any damage at all. However, let it be noted. Fall damage is now absorbed by the entity that lands on the ground when mounted and passed on to the passengers if the mount dies. So let me show you a prime example here. So if we grab ourselves a pig, a saddle, and we just grab the carrot on a stick. Let's place this here, this on top. I'm gonna go to forward slash game mode S, get on top of this guy. And when we fall and he dies, obviously it's done enough damage to kill him. The rest of the damage that he would have took is then pushed on to you. So yeah, you can't jump all the way off there on a horse and expect to survive. You're both gonna die. A really good change for servers and realms. Goat horns can now be heard up to 256 blocks away. So if you had this, your friends all the way up there, and I do this, you could probably scare them. It's a great way to find each other. Finally, it's on par with Java. It also says, tweaked the boss bar hood color. We have a bug report. So for the longest time possible, Java and Bedrock have had a different colored with a boss bar. Another good change, flowing lava and water mixing mechanics now matches Java edition. We have a bug report. This has been an issue since like forever was reported back in 2019. Basically, whenever you tried to place water around lava, it didn't necessarily create cobblestone on Minecraft Bedrock Edition. Well, they went ahead and finally fixed it today. So if I place down this, and then we place down this, and you're going to see this is starting to spread here. As I start to place down the, the water around it, cobblestone starts to generate as well. Now, this is going to be really good for farms. About time they actually put this on par. So a good change for bedrock players. It does say closing the inventory of a boat, raft, or minecart with chest now emits vibrations. So if we have a school, can we put this over here? And we open this, you can see a vibration signal is sent to there. Same with the boat with the chest and same with this one right here. A signal is now sent. Moving on to Java mob parity changes. Zombified villager curing time is now randomized between three and five minutes to match Java edition. Zombified villagers now have the correct biome overlays. We have a bug report. Zombie villagers don't have biome or rank overlays. Basically, whenever you cured one, it wouldn't necessarily be a desert kind of villager if you were inside of a desert. Or let's say if you're inside of a plains, it wouldn't be a plains one. It would just be randomized. Witches now target players within a 16 block distance. Now, interestingly enough, I did try this in beta and preview and it was bugged and it did not work. So we got to forward slash game mode S. Do you notice me? Now, it might take me a little bit of time here, but they should target me. Now, it's not necessarily seeming to be happening here. So we place that down again. See what I mean? I, I don't think this one is perfect. It wasn't perfect in beta and preview. 
And it's definitely not perfect in this version as well. So they're definitely at 16 blocks now. Because I placed them down perfectly. <laughs> but you can see here, the witch doesn't necessarily notice me until... Until I get really... There you go. It, it didn't notice me until incredibly late. So I think they need to revisit that one. Moving on. Sheep that have been sheared previously and have since grown back wool will now drop wool on death. Camels can no longer dash while in lava or water. Iron golems no longer spawn naturally in two block high spaces where they would start suffocating. We have a bug report. Here is the bug report. If we just scroll down, some of you have probably noticed this happening. They shouldn't spawn like this. They try and spawn when there's villagers around. That was finally fixed today. Iron golems and snow golems now have a crumbling-like particle effect when they are created. I like this one. So if we just grab this, keep an eye on the iron golem there. You can see all the particles popping off. And this is the same for a snow golem, which I'm going to kill. Otherwise, we'll have snow absolutely everywhere. Cartographers no longer offer exploration maps as a trade item when not in the overworld. Audio changes. Guardians and Elder Guardians now make flopping sounds when on land. So these now have sounds again. As these guys fight it out. But yeah, there's now a flopping sound for the Guardians. Wither Skeletons now have their own unique sounds. So if we place this down and we just hit them. Also, another change with these guys is updated the sounds that's played when the Wither Skeleton Schools are placed on top of no blocks. Listen to this. Alongside, the sound for picking up items is now played when using the forward slash give command. Stray cats now play a sound when begging for food. This is so cute. Listen to this. Audio changes to bottles. It says bottles now emit sounds when filling from water blocks. So listen to this. Pouring water or potions from a glass bottle into a cauldron emits the appropriate sound. So if we just put this in here. But also filling a glass bottle with water or potion from a cauldron emits the appropriate sound. So let's try this one. Fill this up. Try it again. Same with potions. Drinking from a glass bottle now emits the appropriate sound. They made some changes to water splashing sounds. The ambient sounds for entering, exiting water is now played only when the actor is submerged below eye level in water. This is matching Java Edition. But also the splash sound for entering water has been updated to match Java Edition. So, listen to this. It's saying that it will only make a difference when you're submerged. So if we just get submerged here, you can see as we get submerged, the audio makes changes. Moving on to experimental features. Once again, focusing on villager trade rebalancing. This experiment has no effect on normal worlds. If you want to try these changes, you must turn on the feature toggle in the experiments menu when creating a new world. A word of advice, don't do this in your favorite worlds. Make backups or create brand new worlds. When you're creating a brand new world, head down to experiments and make sure this is enabled or you won't be able to experience the trade changes. It says cartographers from different biomes will sell a different selection of maps. Starting from one village, it will be possible to find every other village type by following maps from village to village. 
Let's read the change log. So the change log will explain why they're doing these changes. And we did get given a picture. I have gone over this before, but let's explain it one more time. So that means if you start inside of a plains, you can trade with a cartographer to get a savannah village map. If we go to a savannah village, we can then go to a desert, back to a plains or to a jungle. If we go to a jungle, you'll see here it's got a star next to it. It does say jungle and swamp villages do not generate naturally. Players must build a village in these biomes to access these secret trades. Now, once you've been to a jungle, you could then go to a swamp. Now you head to a swamp, you could get yourself a snowy map, a tiger, a jungle, etc. Basically, you can bounce from village to village with no problem at all. So these are all the maps available. Let's check them out. There are seven in total for you to explore. Now, as you guys know, let's start with the tiger. This is going to take you to a tiger village. It's telling me that I'm on the top right. If I go in that direction, I will come in contact with a tiger village. Next, we have a savannah. It's showing me a savannah village hut. Next, we have a plains, which I'm already in a plains, but it's going to take me to a different one. We have a swamp explorer map. This will take you to a witch hut because, of course, there's no such thing as a swamp village unless you build one same with a jungle it will take you to a jungle temple snowy will take you to a snowy uh, village house and the desert will take you to a desert village which i really like this symbol so seven new symbols have also been introduced basically minecraft is becoming less rng and more predictable every time you come to a plains trade with a cartographer you will always find a tiger or a savannah map 100% of the time. Also, we have changes to the armorer. Let's read the change log. It says the armorer's trades have been updated with many changes. The biggest change is that buying diamond armor now requires paying a small amount of diamonds as well as emeralds. This is meant to make the armorer's diamond armor trades less useful at the start of the game when players don't have any diamonds while still giving a powerful advantage to advanced players who have spent some time collecting diamonds. Early game players will find armorers useful as a great source of iron armor, shields, and emeralds. Other changes include most master level armorers buy iron blocks and pay very well for them. Chainmail armor is exclusively sold by secret jungle and swamp armorers, the Savannah Armorer sells cursed diamond armor at reduced prices. The Tiger Armorer can swap one piece of diamond armor for another. And then we have another picture. So I see what they're trying to do here. And if you do go ahead and max out, let's say, a Plains one, you'll see here you can trade an iron block for four emeralds. Meanwhile, it's five pieces of iron for one emerald. They're taking away the RNG factor. Each type of enchanted armor is now biome locked. If you come to a plains, you can get protection one and that's it. It cannot be higher. Just like the uh, librarian, the swamp trade will offer you mending when you get to the expert levels. If you go down here though, according to the tiger, you can trade one diamond block for 42 emeralds. Bro, I don't know anyone who's going to do that, but yeah. These are the changes you can expect next update. So I've got a bunch of resources here. We're just going to trade with these villages and max them out and just see what gets offered here. So I will do this one just to show you guys. So as we go further down here, just keep trading these. That's already done. Trade with this guy. As we always get down here, 100% of the time, I just got to get rid of all of these. It's going to offer me the same stuff every single time, which is protection, protection. And like I said, down here, you can start getting iron blocks for emeralds, which I think overall is a pretty good change. But let's just get rid of a bunch of these and let's buy a bunch of them. A bunch of them, you can see here, I can now buy the protection, but I have to trade uh, diamonds and emeralds to get the diamond leggings. Changes to structure loot. It says certain enchanted books now have a high chance of generating in some structures. Ancient cities, you can get mending in abundance. Mine shafts will produce efficiency one all the way up to five. Pillager outposts, quick charge one all the way to three. Do you want to just 
Excuse me a second there. Desert temples on breaking one to three. Jungle temples on breaking one to three. Again, all of this is taking away the RNG factor from Minecraft. And I'd love to know your opinions about this. Remember, it's not final, but it's more than likely going to be introduced. Fixes and changes. Focusing on performance and stability. Everybody's favorite. Fix several crashes that could occur during gameplay. So you know when you play a Minecraft and your game just crashes and you're like, wait, what? Why? Yes, it's fixed those. Also fixed a crash that could occur when running in the R-Cold room in the Spell Ruin Marketplace map. Fixed a crash related to tessellation of water blocks. Fixed an issue where the game would lock up if a mob would move on a block with zero friction. Fixes with gameplay. Players are no longer affected by arrow effects if the arrow is blocked, we have a bug report. So according to the bug report, when you block a tipped arrow or shulker bullet with a shield, you still get affected. Apparently it was fixed today. This was reported back in 2019. So if I go to game mode survival and place this down, I get hit by this guy. Yeah, as you guys can see. But if I block it now, I should obviously not get any effects from this. Previously, you would get effects. I also want to test this with the shulker as well so if we summon a shulker we block this strangely enough though this one has not been fixed I'm, I'm you can clearly see i'm blocking this villages inside the end or never are no longer saved to the overworld players can no longer sometimes clip through blocks when gliding with elytra into blocks buckets can no longer pick up liquids for a few ticks after they've been placed we have a bug report. Once again, a very long time bug. Buckets instantly pick up liquids after placing. MLG slash bucket clutch doesn't work. This was updated today. So if we go all the way up here and you wanted to do an MLG clutch forward slash game mode S. As you guys know, when we place this down, basically I can't pick this up straight away again. Like there's a delay. You can't just like spam do it the way you could previously. I really like this change. It does say this should help making placing and retrieving liquid in a quick succession far more consistent, as well as help players that are using a water bucket to quickly avoid fall damage. Fixed an issue where moving slowly on soul sand would sometimes cause the player to not receive the soul speed movements. Speed. We have a bug report. So here it is, and here is a comparison. So if you had soul speed on, you're playing on Java, you could still move really, really fast when crawling. If you did try and do this on Bedrock Edition, it wasn't possible. So let's run this test, right? So if we go under here, you guys can see we are moving very slow. If we put these on, we can move a little bit faster. If we already have these on and try this once again, you can now move a little bit faster. Players can no longer sometimes clip through blocks when flying in creative mode and spamming the sneak button. Mobs fixed a bug where the sniffer ended digging as soon as the item was created, not the end of the specified dig duration. Camels no longer appear to slide when walking. Camels no longer move their legs when standing still. Camels no longer dash indefinitely when in lava. I mean, if I was dying in lava, I would definitely be panicking. Mobs no longer receive fall damage when falling into a one block deep water pool. So if we just go up here, let's use a pig, for example, pig into water. They don't die instantly. Um, Yeah, so very similar to a player. If I was to fall inside of here in survival, I wouldn't die either. Also, rabbits can once again eat partially and fully growing carrot crops. Moving on to block changes. Fixed a bug where the wrong side of signs would sometimes be edited. Fixed an extremely rare bug. Less than 0.0000003% chance that could cause item frames to not drop their item when hit or destroyed. Third person camera no longer phases through the lower part of a cauldron. Falling into powdered snow no longer causes any damage, no matter the height fallen from but also for mobs it says lightweight mobs and entities wearing leather boots 
can once again sink into the top layer of powdered snow when falling from a height of more than two and a half blocks. That's why this guy was up here. So we'll do him first. All right, so if we break this, you'll see here, he should sink into it. He did. And if I was to fall inside of here again in survival, I won't take any damage. Forward slash game mode S. And that is because, well, you shouldn't take damage from this. I will take damage from mobs, though. Sad news. Skulk blocks no longer drop XP when mined with Silk Touch. There was a pretty cool bug with this. If you had a Silk Touch hoe, for example, and you used it on this, you'd get the block and you'd also get XP. Sadly, that's gone today. Fixes with items. Diagonal banner patterns no longer get inverted when applied to a shield. Placing invalid items into offhand slots will no longer cause the item to drop. So let's say we grabbed this, for example, try to put it inside of there. It no longer just drops on the floor. Warped fungus on a stick is no longer held backwards in first person view. So apparently if you had the warped fungus on a stick and you were holding it, apparently it was inverted. Didn't know that. That was fixed today. Accessibility changes. Fixed an issue where text to speech did not say how to open chat or use emotes. Text-to-speech message for pop-up. Title slash description is now played properly. User interface. Let's read the change log. Here's all the user interface changes. I just didn't see a need to place them all down on signs. But we'll go ahead and read some of the change logs here and see what they actually fixed. But if you are interested in these, things such as camel missing the dash button on smartphones has been fixed. The D-pad touch controls not calibrated properly went up and down. This has been a long time bug, to be honest with you. That's now fixed. Uh, purple border and tooltip text are broken when upgrading diamond gear. So again, some of these are, are really big and some of them are much smaller. Item name overlaps absorption health bar. So feel free to read the change log if you're interested in those. Graphical changes. Equipped enchanted armor now has an overall weaker glint. However, its intensity more noticeably increases and decreases over time. Honestly, that's a really strange change. Random lights no longer appear in the world without a source. We have a bug report. Been reported for many versions. If we go down, apparently random light sources would just appear. And I actually did see this inside of the cherry blossom. So that was also fixed today. Splash particles are now emitted at the actor's waist instead of above their heads. Forgot to brighten this one, but technical updates. Let's read the change log. So technical updates include updated add-on templates, stability and performance commands, mobs, molang trade, API changes, and so much more. If you're interested in the technical side, the link to the change log is below. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I'm always here to keep you all updated. If you guys made it this far, leave a comment down below and say, Hey, Echo, isn't that villager? Pretty fast. But yeah, anyway, today was all about the trade changes and a bunch of Java parity. See you in the next video. Hey, you can now book me on Cameo. Link is down below.